Jesus Christ is going to come back in the sky with so much glory and power that the, that the tribes of the earth are going to mourn, the Bible says. When Jesus Christ comes back, he's not coming back for giggles and high fives. Do you not see how evil the world is? God is not coming back to play around. God is coming back to judge and make war. Jesus Christ is coming back to judge and make war. He's going to make war with all the ungodly, all the people who blaspheme his name, all the people who mock Christ, all the people who don't care about Christ, all the people who are in fake religions, all these people who worship Satan, directly or indirectly. Jesus is going to make war with these people. The Bible says his garment is going to be dipped in blood. See, Americans, you have this miscue idea of God. Many people think, well, God is a person that loves me and I can do anything I want. Well, that's not God. That's not exactly God. God does love you, but God does not love everything that you do, especially if you don't live for him. Because if you're not living for him, the Bible says God is angry at the wicked every single day. So God does not love you being rebellious. God does, God does not love you how you ignore reading the Bible, you ignore praying, you ignore doing all these things. God does not love you in your disobedience. It break God's heart how God wakes you up every single day and you reject them every single day. Could you imagine loving someone for 80 years and that person just despised you all their life? God gives you air, God gives you all this stuff for years and years. And you still just kind of flick them off like who cares about God I got better things to do how do you think that make God feel God has emotions too where do you think your emotions come from so yeah people how do you think God feels that most of the world rejects them see uh, God is love and the Bible says God's name is jealous you know God is a jealous God why because he loves his creation and his creation cheats on him with false gods there's a lot of false gods in this world that the devil made and human beings made too God gets jealous when he sees his creation worship a false god like Zeus, Poseidon, Allah, uh, you got um, Mary statues, you got the Pope, all these people, all these things are like false gods and God gets very angry when his, when his creation worships these false gods. But the thing about human beings is human beings, you love tradition so much, you love tradition to being comfortable so much that you will still worship these false gods. You still worship that Catholic statue because, well, my auntie was a Catholic. Oh, my, my dad's a Catholic, man. Don't judge me. Dude, the devil gets you trapped in tradition, people. When God tells you the truth about who he is, you're like, oh, well, I can't believe in that, bro. My whole family is a Catholic. They're Mormon. I can't do anything. The devil gets you trapped. The devil gets you trapped in religious stuff. But coming to Christ is not about being religious, people. It's, it's not about just doing a checklist off the box saying, oh, okay, I got to do this and that for God. It is about being obedient, but God does not want your religious duties. God wants you to be obedient in all aspects out of love. God wants you to obey him out of love. But a lot of people, you go, you go through the motions, you go through the motions of thinking you're a Christian, of thinking, oh, you know God, because you go to church every um, holiday, you go to church every blue moon or something like that. And that's not what God wants from you at all. You know, God does not want your 50% some guy out there I talked to you earlier, he was married, man. He was like, man, why can't I give everything to God, man? Why can't I just give like a little a little bit to God? He'd be okay with that. And I told him because, well, God is 100% committed to you. God is committed to you 100%. You know, if God wasn't committed to you at all, folks, what if God just stopped letting you breathe? What if God just stopped feeding you? What if God just stopped providing for you? See, people, you don't understand how much you actually need God. You take, you take life for granted. You take existence for granted. You take clean water for granted. There are people in the world. There's people in the world who don't have clean water, and, that, and and the thing is, some of these people still have more joy than most Americans. There are people in the world who don't have nice homes and all these comfortable beds, but they still have a smile on their face. They're actually really joyful because these people figure out what's the purpose of life. It's not about their wealth. It's not about how much how much stuff they got. In America, many people feel like, well, a good life. It's having a lot of things, you know. I need, I need the yacht. I need the shoes. I need the car. I need the gold chain. I need the nice watch. And that's not, that's not what makes a good life at all. You know what I'm saying? You can have all those things and still hate life. There's a lot of rich people who want to commit suicide, people. 
So you, you cannot just get a lot of things and feel like, okay, I got all this stuff, now my life is good. No, you can still be very miserable, very, very miserable with a lot of stuff because you don't have the Lord, you don't have God. See, God made everything, people. So when you have God, you have everything. When you have God, you have everything you need. But a lot of people, you try to you try to replace God with materials. You try, you try to replace God with vanity, money. Um, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And, and this culture is a culture that loves money. You people really, really love money. See, money is important, but money is not the end-all, be-all, people. Life is not about making money. Life is not about making the most money. The Bible says, riches profit not in the day of wrath. God doesn't care about how big your savings account is. God doesn't care how big your, your bank account is. There's a lot of rich people in hell right now. They're not rich no more. They're not rich no more. There's a lot of poor people in hell too. There's a lot of people who think they're above other people based off their money status or whatever status. And all this stuff is pride. See, money is a snare to a lot of you Americans. You live in a lot of prosperity. You live, yet you live in a lot of comfort right now. And this is actually very bad for you people because you folks, you folks don't want to rely on God. You do not want to put your trust in God. You put your trust in the military. You put your trust in politics. You put your trust in your AR-15 gun. Some people, some of you folks, you got like 10,000 guns back home and stuff. You got, you got your trust in all these guns and stuff. And this stuff is going to be a snare to you because when God sends judgment upon this land, God's going to hit you where it hurts, folks. God's going to take your big account away. He's going to take all your money away. He's going to take food away. What are you going to do there, folks? What are you going to do when God humbles you? Because God knows how to humble you, people. He knows where to hit you where it hurts, America. And that's the money part. When Americans don't have their money, when people don't get their latte from Starbucks, people will start um, freaking out. I'm telling you, folks, you're very comfortable in this lifestyle, and you don't want to, you don't want to chase God. But when God humbles you, when you get humbled, you can't go to the beach no more. You can't go on vacations no more. When you're on another lockdown, you're going to humble yourself and realize there's a God in heaven. You're going to realize, wow, man, I was very prideful and I actually need God. And God's going to have to do it because you, you people in America, you exalt yourself above God. You, you have exalted your life above God. Many people say, hey, man, God's just not for me. Jesus is just not for me, man. That's just not my thing. What you mean is not your thing. You mean God's not your thing? Do you not like life? Do you not like breathing? Do you not like existence? What do you mean God's not your thing? God God created you. You're created. Your whole purpose is to live for God. This idea that people don't need God, that's very foolishness, people. You're going to realize you do need God when you die. When you're on, when you're on your deathbed,